Hello, in this video titled Continuity and End Behaviors, you will learn how to compare and contrast continuity and discontinuity, you know the difference of those, identify various types of discontinuities that exist, and also describe the end behaviors of functions using graphs. So let's begin first the, with the difference between continuity. A continuity means that a graph is said to be continuous if there are no breaks or holes gaps in any uh, throughout the graph at all now if there are breaks or holes in the graph then that's called discontinuous so that's the antonym to the word continuous let's look at the graph on here on the next slide so this is an example of a graph that's continuous notice that there are no gaps there's no holes in the graph and a very simple test is if I draw or trace over the graph I can trace it again without picking up my pen at all throughout the graph I don't have to pick up my pen to continue drawing the graph to this function so this is an example of, con of continuity of a continuous function now there are three types of discontinuous functions or discontinuities. The first type of discontinuity that exists or that we're going to discuss about is infinite discontinuity. This happens when a function increases or decreases infinitely as x approaches that value of x, x is equal to a, from the left or to the right. So as you see right here, we have essentially a vertical isotope you can see that we have a vertical isotope right here. Let me highlight it in yellow. And the behavior of the graph as we get closer and closer to that vertical isotope is that the ends of that graph or the these ends of the graph go towards either positive infinity or negative infinity. They could go both in the same direction or in opposite directions, but they're going towards the infinity. So this is an example of, of a infinite, infinite discontinuity. And again, it's discontinuous because again, this graph is not connected from negative infinity to positive infinity along the domain. So here, since the domain doesn't exist at x is equal to a, so our domain is all the values of x except for whatever this value of a is. And the graph again, jump. Um, points towards the infinities, this is an example of an infinite discontinuity. Now the second type of discontinuity we're going to discuss today is jump discontinuity. This occurs when the function jumps from one point to another point at this value of x is equal to a. So here we do have a value for x is equal to a, it's this open, so I'm sorry, that closed circle there. But notice how the graph from left to right is being drawn going downwards it then jumps up all the way over here I have to pick up my pen and then start the graph from here and then to continue the graph so this jumps all of this space in between to get from this open circle to that open circle to continue the graph so this is referred to as a jump discontinuity and the last type of discontinuity is referred to as a removable discontinuity this occurs when there's a hole in the graph regardless of what the graph looks like, curved or straight, like as you see right here, if there's an open hole within that graph, again, that value of a is not in the domain, so x is not going to equal to this value of a, so that's our domain right here. All the values from negative infinity to positive infinity, except for whatever this x value is there, it's called the removable one. The, and the reason it's called removable one, because all we have to do is just simply fill in that hole. Algebraically, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but uh, graphically, it's just simply about filling that hole. If I fill in that hole, then I do not have a discontinuity. The graph is continuous, so I have removed it. Of course, algebraically, it's a little bit more difficult, and we have to do some algebra, some math, in order to be able to do such a thing. But this is what a removable discontinuity looks like in terms of a graph. So let's look at some examples here. So here, in this example here, this graph again is discontinuous. It is discontinuous at 
the x value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. And the type of discontinuity that it has is a jump discontinuity. Because again, it jumped from up here to down there to continue the graph. The second type of graph is a continuous function. Notice that there are no gaps or holes of any kind throughout the graph. So this is a continuous function. So it has no discontinuity, thus it cannot be classified as a con discontinuous function uh, graph. The third example is discontinuous and it's discontinuous at the x value of positive 1 right here where the vertical isotope is located at. This is again occurring at that value so since it's a vertical isotope my ends as you see right there are pointing towards the infinity so this is an infinite discontinuity. And that's again the difference between a continuous and discontinuous function. Now the second part of this video and th in this lesson is the describing the end behaviors of, the, of a function. How do the ends of the graph behave? Meaning how is the graph behaving as we get values of x to become very, very small or we plug in values of x that are very, very big? What is the y value approaching? So in terms of a graph, we look at this again by looking at the two ends. So here we have our left end in red and here on the bottom we have our right end of the graph. So we're interested in which direction these things are going. So the left end of the graph, notice that it's pointing upwards. So that means that the y values of x are getting closer and closer to infinity. So it's not going to equal to infinity because, again, we can't actually equal that. It's not an actual number. So we use this notation here to mean that we're getting closer and closer to that. So as x moves towards a positive infinity and negative infinity, the end behaviors describe what is happening to the values of f of x. Again, your y values. Remember, f of x is the exact same thing as y. So what's happening to the y values? Now, since we're not going to equal to these, again, these arrows that we're using here and over here, right there, that is read as the word approach, like approaching. Okay, it's getting closer and closer to it, but actually never going to reach it. So, to the right, as x approaches positive infinity, which is to the right, this bottom end down there, the graph is pointing downwards. So, the y values are getting closer and closer to negative infinity. As x approaches positive, I'm sorry, negative infinity to the left, the function is pointing upwards. So that means that all of the y values are getting closer and closer to positive infinity. So this is describing the behavior of our function as we make values of x very big and very small. So as, and the way we read this is as, as x approaches negative, in, I'm sorry, positive infinity, f of x, aka your y values, approach negative infinity. And the second one is read as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. So the key thing again is just understanding what this notation means more than anything else. You could easily see which direction the graph is moving and just understand what this notation right here means. So let's look at some examples. So like in this example right here. So as x approaches negative infinity, what is the end of the graph doing? So to negative infinity, that is on the left side. Okay, so we're looking at this left end right there. Well, since it's pointing upwards, that means that the function is approaching positive infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, now let's look at the right. Positive infinity is towards the right. 
that left end is also pointing upwards. So f of x is approaching positive infinity as well. Let's look at a second example. Here, as x approaches negative infinity, so that means that we're interested on the left side of the left end, so that's this end. Notice that the graph is pointing downwards, so the function approaches the negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, f of x is approaching also downwards, so it's also approaching negative infinity. So there are the two directions, and the graph is behaving the same way on the left end, which has been highlighted in blue, and the right end, which is highlighted in red. Now, a graph doesn't necessarily have to behave like this towards the ends. It could behave in a way that instead of approaching infinity, it approaches a specific value. And we'll get into that one right now. Let me do one more example of this. So here, let me first write as x approaches negative infinity. I always like to do the left one end. doesn't matter which one you start off with. So as x approaches negative infinity, which is this left end right there, the graph is pointing downwards. So the function values are getting smaller and smaller. So that means that they are approaching negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, our right end, which is this end right there, it's pointing upwards. So our function is approaching positive infinity. Now, like I stated earlier, uh, not every function behaves like this. Some functions, again, approach a specific value. It is bounded. These examples here, the end behaviors are unbounded because they're going towards the infinity. There's nothing to, again, limit them or bound them to a specific value. But on this example right here that you see on this graph here, our function is approaching a specific value. It's bounded by an isentope here. So look, the notation is still the same. We have again our left, that's our right end. Let me do the right end in red. The right end in red. So that's this end right there. And the left end as x approaches negative infinity, which is this end right there. Notice that they're not pointing towards the infinities. They are leveling off because they are bounded by this horizontal isentope. So this part of the graph can go above this line and this part of the graph over here, where you see it here, can go below this line. So it's a boundary line that the graph again levels and approaches. So in this specific value, since this boundary line is at the value of y is equal to negative one, on the left end and on the right end, well right and left, they're both approaching, the function is approaching negative one because again that's your boundary. So it's bounded by the value of negative one. Let's look at some other examples. Look at this graph here. So as x approaches negative infinity, again I always like to start on the left side first, you could necessarily don't have to, you could start on the right, but as x approaches negative infinity, so that's the left end, as you see right there, this end right there, notice that it's bounded, that it's not pointing towards the infinities, it's coming up again, and you can use the right part of the graph again to verify it. It's bounded by this horizontal isentope, which is at y, 1, 2, 3, is equal to negative 3. So as x approaches negative infinity, our function value approaches that value of negative 3, that boundary line of negative 3. And well, the other end is going to behave the exact same way. The only difference is, is that instead of approaching the function from below, it's approaching, I'm sorry, approaching the value of negative 3 from below, it's approaching that value from above. So it's still bounded by that horizontal isentope.
and again, and for the most parts, most of these functions, again, again, that are bounded in those situations are bounded by the exact same horizontal asymptote. So let's look at a different example. Let's look at example number nine. As you see here, we have another situation where our graph is bounded as x approaches the positive and negative infinity, and it's bounded by the horizontal line of y is equal to two. So as x approaches negative infinity on the left and as x approaches positive infinity to the right the graph the function values approach again that boundary line of positive 2 So there you go. And just one more, just again, just to re-emphasize this. We could have a situation where the end behaviors of one end, again, is bounded, but the other end isn't bounded, like in this graph right here. Notice that as x approaches negative infinity to the left, the left end, which is this left end right there because there's no other piece of graph there, this left end is pointing towards the infinity. So f of x is approaching positive infinity. But as x approaches positive infinity, so the right end, which is over here, you're going to see that the right end is bounded. It's not going to go below the horizontal line. y is equal to negative 5. Now I know it kind of looks like it's actually on that line but again because of the graph and how zoomed out we are we can't tell that there's actual small small spaces between again the graph and that green line that I just drew. But because again they're so close together you can not tell that they're against but there is space between them. So the the left end is unbounded because it's going towards the infinities, but the right end is bounded and levels off and it approaches again this value of negative 5 from above. So our function behaves in that manner. So the end behaviors of, our, of this function are that as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity, and the left, the right end behavior of the function is that as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches to negative 5. All right. So there you go. This is, again, the lesson on continuity and the behaviors, the end behaviors of a function when we make the values of x or look at values of x very, very small and the negative uh, x approaching negative infinity or plug in a very big, big, big number for x, x approaching positive infinity, and what the value of the function would also equal to. Well, again, thank you for watching. If you do have any questions, please send me a message on Remind. Have a great day.